Dana White's Contender Series Week 9. Quick picks coming at you now. The MMA Fortune Teller. The Teller. The Teller. The Teller. The Teller. The Teller. The Teller. What is up, you guys? Dana White's Contender Series Week 9 taking place tonight. Filming this Tuesday morning. Going to be firing these picks at you guys pretty quickly here. Um, you know, Definitely broke down some tape on all the fighters here, but didn't necessarily go as in-depth as I usually do. Been putting in a lot of time for this upcoming weekend's card. I got an 8-unit max play already locked up. I got another large play locked up, and I'm working on some other things. You guys know I'm I'm really really high on this this weekend's pay per view card, and um, it's it's been consuming a lot of my time. Uh, my prediction video for that that fight card is already out. It's been uploaded as uh, early as, as Sunday mo uh, Sunday night, uh, so that's there for you guys as well. But with no further ado, let, let's take a look into this fight card, and and I'll tell you guys what I think about it from what I've seen. Uh, then the first fight, we got Olivier. Murad taking on Bin Z. We got the Haitian fighter taking on the Chinese fighter uh, Olivier, a guy that's that's fought over in Titan FC. I'm very familiar with that promotion. Uh, I know exactly uh, the location where he's fought. Been there a couple times. Been to a couple events over there. Um, it's definitely a a solid scene. There's some some top level talent that that goes through that scene over there. Uh, Olivier, an undefeated fighter, um, is he? One of those guys that we're talking about is he some of that that top talent coming through the Titan FC ranks? Um, he's still very green. Uh, he's only five and zero. Oh. I believe he's only had one fight actually uh, with Titan FC, and that was against uh, at Naim Naimov, um, who was a five and uh, five and one fighter. Uh, but eight, and that was eight months ago, so not necessarily a long layoff. Olivier, a powerful guy, very muscular. Um, I was not that impressed when, when you break down that that fight there. Uh, I was not that impressed with it. Uh, the striking is not up to par. Uh, it's really not the way that he he throws his, his hands and uh, his strikes. It's not a high caliber level. Uh, there's no way that you could say that. Um, now, is the guy sharpening up his tools by the day? And could we see a more refined fighter every single time he goes out there? For sure. But in the meantime, you got this Chinese guy, Ben Xi. He's 8-2. and two. He's grown up, literally grown up from his first professional fight uh, for, for, till till his last fight through the 1FC ranks, and you guys know I'm very high in 1FC. I think that's the number one Asian promotion uh, in the world, and uh, there's a lot of high-level talent there. And this guy, Bing Z, has gone out in some of those fights and, and really has implemented his, his game plan. The guy is a nasty grappler. He's relentless, uh, hence the name, The Stalker. I think it, it definitely sums up his style. He's walking forward. He's looking to get you down to the mat, and I think that he's a, a more polished fighter in a lot of senses. Um, you know, he's only 23 years old, I still think that this is a guy that's a lot more polished. Um, he's a tall dude. He's going to have a height advantage. Uh, I believe he's going to have a reach advantage as well. We don't have a reach here on Olivier, but I assume that there will be some kind of reach advantage going on there. And uh, as you see, uh, the much more uh, the much more uh, rangier type of fighter. Not that that means anything, but at the end of the day, I think he's the more polished fighter. I think that the grappling uh, could, could be a, a big thing here. And if it stays in the feet, like I said, I was just not that impressed from what I've seen from Murad on the feet. He needs to show me show me something more. Um, if we take a look at the live line, and uh, we, we got Ben right around a, a minus two ninety. Uh, he's right around a minus two ninety favorite right now. So it seems like people are in agreement there. Uh, he seems to be the more polished fighter that should be able to handle business. Um, but we'll see if, if Olivier is cleaning things up. He's definitely a, a solid athlete. He has some power. We'll see if he could try to land a big shot on the feet and shake things up. Uh, and the next fight. Now this fight right here is really one of the only fights in the card where you can kind of pick your poison. We got a lot of heavy favorites throughout this card. A lot of fighters that seem to be the, the superior fighter over their opponent. So it's going to be tough to pick some of those dogs. Here, uh, it's basically a pick them. So you could you could uh, pick your poison here. Colton Engeland taking on Manuel Torres. Uh, we'll start off with Colton, the, the, the white assassin. Uh, this is a guy that um, is a, a powerful dude. He comes in very physically fit as well. We saw him at the weigh-ins, uh, you know, looking shredded up, uh, looking in good shape, and so is his opponent. And uh, Torres is definitely the taller guy with, with a, a longer reach. And um, I think that Torres is going to want to keep this fight on the feet, try to be, um, you know, the the, the, uh, the more productive striker, try to, try to out-volume Colton there. Colton has some power in his hands as well. But I think the X factor in this fight is... I've kind of liked what I've seen from Colton in some of his fights as far as his wrestling goes. Uh, he definitely has a wrestling background. 
Uh, at least I would believe so from, from what I've seen on tape. And uh, I think that could be the X factor uh, from the one fight I was able to pull up on Torres on YouTube. Uh, mind you, a very blurry video that's on YouTube. Uh, it was it was an old-fashioned Mexican scrap. These guys were going at it. And, uh, you know, there's no doubt in my mind that, that Torres is a scrappy fighter. Uh, we'll see how much he's polishing up his overall skill set, but he's going to have to be on par with his takedown defense. Otherwise, I think that Colton could, could exploit that a little bit. And that's what's going to lead me to pick uh, Colton uh, Engelund, Engelund, however you pronounce that last name there. It's like a different version of England. Um, but, um, yeah, so you know, I'm going to go with Colton based on the, the, the wrestling X factor there. Colton has some power in his hands as well. I think I edge Manuel on the feet, though. If, uh, it'll be close there. But I think Manuel will have that that well he will have that reach advantage. I think he could be a little bit more scrappy there. It'll play out closely there. But uh Colton will look to close the distance at times. He'll look to to test Manuel's takedown defense. We'll see how that goes. And uh, like I said, almost a pick him. Uh, a little bit of action coming in on Colton as of recently, creeping up to that minus one forty range. And I think people are looking at the same things I was when you look at his tape. Uh definitely was getting some solid takedowns in some of his fights. Now, in the next fight, we got two women throwing down. <clears throat> Q-Hu Yan taking on Kareen Silva. Uh, now, this fight right here taking place in the flyweight division. This is an interesting fight uh, for me. Both of these girls have very similar uh, fighting styles. You know, when you're breaking down tape and then both of these women seem to like to bully their opponent. They like to close the distance, smother them against the cage, rip them down to the mat, uh, wear on them, lean on them, lay on them. Uh, they definitely had that kind of that kind of style. Now they finished some fights as well. They have some submission skills down there, um, but I wasn't necessarily impressed with anything on the feet from either of them. At least nothing that I was able to pull up really impressed me there. Um, but you know what they say now: some two fighters that are not necessarily so exciting, you know, on both of their ends. But when you have two fighters like that, sometimes and they're not able to get the fight down to the mat, you know, wrestler versus wrestler, a lot of times it ends up taking place in the feet and then it ends up being an entertaining fight. I wouldn't be shocked if that happens here. Um, I might be a little surprised, not necessarily shocked, um, but I'm interested to see does this fight deliver? Because I think this fight has the makings to be kind of a boring fight. We'll see how it plays out, though. Of course, you can never call call these fights to play out like that. You never know what's going to happen in there. It is Dana White's contender series. They know what's on the line. Um, I like Kareem Silva here. I think that Silva seemed to be able to implement that type of style a little bit better to me from the fights I saw on her. She's a a, a larger fighter. She's a little bit more of a, a physical specimen compared to Jan. She's the bigger girl here. I think that I could I could see her uh, thriving a little bit more so in, the, in those deep clinches and those deep uh, wrestling exchanges. We'll see who comes in in, in better shape. That will also be a big factor. How will these fighters look in the later rounds? Which one will kind of be a little bit tired? Maybe one of the other fighters could take over and get her down, rain some ground and pound, try to finish the fight there. Uh, but Kareem seemed to be in pretty decent shape in some of the fights I pulled up on her. And again, you could pull up. Uh, fortunately, all, all these fighters, you, you were able to pull up at least one solid fight of them as of recently. So you can see what they're about. And uh, I'm, I'm going to take Kareem Silva there. And uh, again, this is a fight. Where people seem to be agreeing from what I saw, man. The line agrees with it. Minus 260 favorite is uh, Kareem Silva. And um, kind of makes sense there. But if any of these fights are a little bit tricky with those high lines, be careful on a girl fight like that. Maybe, you know, I don't know how comfortable I would feel on a line like that. You got to be a little bit wary on, on a fight like this. So keep that in mind. Now, I'm excited for this fight. I'm, I'm more excited for this fight here than any fight on the card. Javad Basharat taking on Oran Kalun. We got the Palestinian fighter, or excuse me, sorry about that. The Afghanistan, the Afghani fighter, Afghanistan fighter taking on uh, the Israeli fighter. Uh, so you know, there's no love lost here, uh, coming just from a, from a cultural sense. Um, if you guys are, are, you know, well versed in what goes on in the world, you know that these these two nations are not fond of each other. Um, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of people watching this fight, uh, rooting on, you know, their, their fighters here. I'm sure all the Israelis will be watching this. Uh, you know, the Afghanistan, Afghanis will be watching this. This is a, a good fight. Not only the Afghanis, maybe the Palestinians, if they have access to watch these fights and a lot of people in the Middle East over there, um, there was already no love lost. As soon as we saw the stare downs, um, you know, we, we see them, uh, or Iran actually stuck his hand out for a handshake and J Javid was not having it at all. And uh, if you guys saw the stare down, 
I'm willing to guarantee that that Aran Kaloon said something that was really messed up because I saw Sean Shelby's face. And if you saw Javid, he looked back at Shelby and he goes, you heard that? And uh, I have a feeling just I'm just saying I have a feeling that it was probably something that was nasty, uh, probably for, in, in a cultural sense. I don't think it was just your your random banter. And uh, Aran was all flushed. His face was all red. There was something going on there. Again, though, this is a. This is a real rivalry type of fight, man. There's nations that are watching these guys. There's a lot riding on their shoulders. This isn't just your normal Dana White's Contender Series fight. Uh, both of these guys undefeated. 10-0 is Javid. 16-0 is Aran. Um, Aran, 36 years old. He hasn't fought in over two years. Well, Javid was in there within the year, about 10 months ago. Um, you know, we take a look at them at the stare down. Uh, Javid is definitely the rangier and larger men, men of the two. Uh, Iran seems a little bit undersized here. Uh, breaking down tape on them. Uh, Javid had some moments in a fight that I... Actually, I think I pulled up his last fight there. And uh, Javid had some moments in that fight. Started off a little slow. And then actually showed to be a pretty aggressive fighter that, that, that was able to land some solid shots there. He's a feisty guy. Uh, on the other hand, Iran has an extremely padded record. An extremely padded record. Uh, so that's 16-0. and 0. Take that for what you will. Uh, he does have one legit victory. There's one guy that it seems legit. I don't know exactly what went on there. Not crazy about what I saw from him on tape. He is a tricky submission guy. I mean, we saw him pull up a, a nice little triangle choke here from his back. Um, you know, that's one of the, the the most least likely submissions to hit in the UFC. It's crazy. If you actually look up how, how often the, this triangle choke actually happens, it barely ever happens. So you know his opponent, uh, you know, Julian Malaku was not on the level there. Um, I don't think that that Javid is that elementary on the mat. And I think when it comes down to this just being a straight-up straight up MMA fight, I think Javid will be landing the heavier shots. I think he'll be the nastier fighter in there. I have a feeling that he's really going to come out and uh, the Snow Leopard's going to do some damage here. Um, I like the Afghani fighter to take out uh, the Israeli Oran Kaloun. I've kind of talked about the Israeli MMA scene a little bit. You know, it, you, shot, you guys saw what happened a couple weeks ago in the main event. We had a young Israeli fighter. And I, and I wasn't feeling really what was going on, the scene over there, his record fighting over there. And um, you saw what happened. Uh, the the uh, team alpha male coach, uh, Mike Mike Mallet, went in there, finished him within seconds. That was an official play of mine as well. Um, we'll see if this guy, Kaloon, can, can break you know, my, my mindset on that. You know, let me see what, what's going on over there in the Israeli scene. I mean, this guy's 16-0. and 0. If there's a guy that's a legit fighter coming out of there, then then show that to me here. Um, you know, I would be happy to see that 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 the level of the game is is uh, escalating over there. We'll see if that's that's the case. I think that Javid though uh, is going to be just a little bit too much for him there. Now we take a look at the line. Javid is right around a. To scroll up here for some reason they separated it. Javid is right now right around a minus two twenty five, and action has been coming in on him too. So people that are breaking on the tape and these guys. And you're looking at all the different elements. You're definitely seeing that that he's probably the guy that's going to get his hand raised. Again, though, the fight game's crazy. We'll see how that plays out. All right, we got Christian Kinoez taking on Long Gizau. Uh, two guys that are still very young, 23 and 25 years old. Both these guys have a, have, a, have a lot of experience as well, which is interesting. Already at the age that they're at, these guys have been putting in work. Um, uh, Zhao, you could just pull up fights from him fighting over on the Australian scene when he was just 19 years old. Um, I'll say this much if there's a fight also that the line might be a little bit off here, I'm gonna say that this is one here. Um, Zhao creeping up to that plus 450 range, you know, Kinoa's going up, steaming up to the minus 630 range. To me, that's a little crazy. Uh, breaking on tape on them, you know, Zhao is a, is a competent fighter. If you pull up tape on the guy, the guy's a competent fighter, and I'm talking about. Fights where he was only 19 years old and he was throwing out some legit shots out there with his hands. So, um, you know, I do think at the end of the day, though, uh, Kinoas is a guy that really shows to have a lot of talent. And I think he has, he has, he's the fighter with more potential. Um, and, and that's why I will pick him to win the fight. Uh, we'll take a look at these guys squaring off here. Um, both of them coming in, in phenomenal shape. I mean, uh, Long is, is looking in to be in tip-top shape here as well. He's not undersized. This is going to be a good fight here. I like Christian Quinoez to get the job done, though. I, I think that he'll be a little bit much on the feet. He has some nasty hands. He's a scrappy guy. But again, Long Zhao is also a guy that has good boxing. Watch the accuracy on his shots. Uh, this is the guy. This The line's off in this fight. I think the line's off in this fight, okay? I don't know why so much action's coming on the Quinoez. But I, but I do like Quinoez to win the fight overall, okay? Now... 
that's going to take us to the main event here. We got Janzi Silva taking on Godzi Omar Gadiziv. We got the undefeated Russian fighter. I mean, this if this doesn't fit the theme of this week, uh, another top-level Russian fighter taking on um, a talented Brazilian fighter in Janzi. Um, I'm gonna make this short, man. We're gonna we're gonna finish this card here. I'm trying to get these out to you guys quick. The fights are gonna be starting up in a couple hours over here. Um, but again, Janzi coming in as a pretty hefty dog, plus 400. Well, you got Godzi coming in at a mi up to a minus 600 right now. Um, you could actually pull up. You could pull up Godzi's uh, whole last fight here. It, it was an impressive victory over Vladimir Vasiliev. Uh, he's a well-rounded fighter. Show to throw some nice combinations, you know, mixing things up, working the hands with the kicks and whatnot. He can grapple. Um, I mean, this guy, he's undefeated. He has a solid resume behind him. He's a legit fighter. And then on the other hand, we got Janzi, who's a scrappy Brazilian fighter who, um, you know, you could pull up a fight on him right here. Janzi Jones versus uh, Venito Antunes. This is actually the only fight I could pull up on him. He, he looks to be decently talented. I see why he's getting a shot here, but I think he might be a little bit outmatched here. And uh, as you guys guessed it, you know, we're, we're going to take the rush in the main event. Uh, he, he just seems, in my opinion, to be uh, the fighter that, that's, you know, more likely uh, ready to be uh, getting a contract in the UFC at that too, get the victory and also might be fighting in the UFC here relatively soon, man. So try to make this quick for you guys. Sorry, I didn't get this video out to you guys earlier. Enjoy the fights tonight. A lot of content coming from me all throughout the week. We got a giant pay-per-view event taking place this Saturday. I'm gonna have content coming all week and especially on my Instagram, MMA Fortune Teller underscore. Like I said, we got plays already locked up. Do not hesitate to reach out to me for pricing. Hit that like buddy like button on your way out. Subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you guys signing out. Teller. The MMA fortune, MMA fortune teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller.